Oh, it's a northern barb. All right. Wow. He came right out of the water. Yeah. Oh. What a jumper. Look at this spinner bait. It's almost in a complete circle. I like the way you do the fish. I like my fish well done. You know, if you want to enjoy a great trip, Marmac is the place to do it. Let's go fishing. Even when you're in the mood. Let's go fishing. Well, it's just me and you. Head on down to the fishing hole. Grab your hat, get your pole. Let's go fishing when you're in the mood. Canadian Sport Fishing is brought to you by Rapala. Premium fishing gear crafted from experience. Yamaha Outboards. Reliability starts here. Sail, the outdoors superstore. Fisher Girl. Catch the passion. Okay, Barb. Nice. We got another one. Yes. You know, you get so comfortable in these boats. Normally, when you travel to northern areas, you don't have nice cedar strips like this. This is awesome. They've got comfortable seats. The boats are nice and long. And because, the, oh, it's a northern Barb. All right. You got a northern. Yeah. And he ate it. So I think this might be a shore lunch fish. All right. Now, this is going to be interesting. I don't have a leader. I just have that light fluorocarbon. Do you want to? Well, hopefully it won't break off. Do um, you mind doing the honors with the I net would part? love to, yeah. Okay. He's actually perfect eating size for fillets. This is good. Because I enjoy northern pike and walleye. Come on. Don't shake that. Don't cut the line. Wow. He came right out of the water, Barb. Is that right? Yeah. He's going to head shake. Don't cut that line. You know, we're using light outfits. These are the walleye team series from Rapala. And uh, just using 10 pound braid, which is the diameter of four pound monofilament line with lighter leaders. So, okay, Barb, ready? Getting you there. You can do it. Oh, that's you a can long do it. fish. Good. And if you can swing them over here, perfect. I'm gonna grab them just behind the head. Beautiful specimen. Yeah, look wow. at that. Nice, healthy pike. You know, we are gonna be targeting pike, but a little bit later. Man, he ate my jig. Good thing I got the proper tools with me, Barb. Yeah. The hook out. That jig is probably down about uh, four or five inches. Would you mind handing me the pliers, Barb? Sure. This is where you have to have the right tools. Now I tell people when you use this hook out, very important to have it over the boat because if the pike thrashes, even having it over the boat, there's a chance that the hook out's going to go flying into the lake. Okay. Got the jig out. Hook out's out. And you know, this guy's going to be part of our shore lunch. He's going to be very good eating along with the walleye. We're looking for some bigger fish. There's so many northerns here at Marmac that it's hard to find some of the larger fish. So this is probably one of the average size fish. We're going to be enjoying a nice shore lunch again today, and it'll probably be with northern pike. Do you want me to grab the net at all? Yeah, if you don't mind, Barb. Okay. So this guy's kind of fought out. He's just head shaking, which is good. We've got some lush weed growth. Trying to shake that hook out, Barb. Oh, is he? Yeah, I'll lead him right in there. Okay. Good net job. Okay, Thank you. Barb. Let's get him in the boat. Yep. Yeah, he's, um, I don't know if he's going to be a keeper. Um, here at Marmac, you can keep six pike. Let's see if you can bring them over here, Barb. Um, they, they have to be under 24 inches, and you can keep two pike that are over 24, but they have very strict slot um, restrictions. So this guy might be just 24. 
And you can see he's got that Trigger X grub hanging out of his mouth and that nice single hook is just through the roof of the mouth. So Barb's using a big worm hook like that as well. So it's a lot easier to contend with these fish and I think safer when you've only got one hook. Okay, so I'm gonna take a quick measurement. We wanna keep three or four for shore lunch, but we want it to be under 24 inches. Here at Marmac, they've got these nice tape measures right in the cedar boats. Barb, what's your guess? What do you think he is? I would say 25, 26. You know what? He's 25 inches. So you can see they've got it marked right here, this blue color for the northern pike. It says limit of six under, I'll move this over, under 24 inches, which is right here. And then it says only two northern pike can be greater than 24 inches, but only one greater than 33 inches. So I know it sounds complicated, but as long as you keep your fish inside this blue, they're the right size. Okay, Barb, let's get him back in the net. Good, Barb. Yeah, we'll get him in the water. Yep. Let him revive for a little bit. Okay. If you just hold him over the side, you can get him away from the boat a little bit. Good. Yeah, he's going to take off in just a second. You can see he's starting to get his color back because yep. we measured him. Yep. As soon as they get their color back, then they swim off. You lower the net, Barb, he's probably going to take off. There he goes. Good release, Barb. Thank you. Excellent. Now let me show you a little bit the grub that we're using here. I've decided to go with a very large worm hook. This is probably about a seven odd size. And I wanted that because I'm using a pretty long grub. This grub is almost five inches long. It's made by Trigger X and it's one of their paddle tail minnows. And you can see I've got it rigged up Texas style because we're going through some weeds. So if I depress down, you can see the hook sticking out. But if I let the plastic grub go back up, it's really weedless. But as soon as a pike clamps on it, it's going to get hooked. So that's what it looks like right there. Then what I have here is a fluorocarbon leader that our good friend Gabor Horvath made up for us to fish up here for northerns. And then a few split shot because this large blade, Colorado blade, has a lot of water resistance and a lot of flash. So I want it to sink slowly, but then when it gets down to the right depth, I would just retrieve it. And the nice thing about using these trigger X is that pike will actually hold on to them. So when you feel a hit, don't set the hook right away. Just ease back and put more pressure on instead of just snapping the rod back. That way you get that single hook to go right through the snout, just like the last one. X Mark, you find fish catch of the day. Travis, Tony Brecknock calling from Canadian Sport Fishing. I need you to think back to the day that you caught the fish. What gave you that big smile? Anything you might have used to catch that and land that fish? And go ahead, let me have it. Well, we were in Pickering. Uh, I think it might have been Duffins Creek, and I was with my buddy. We both hooked one at the same time. He uh, reeled his in pretty quick, so he came in to help me, and uh, mine gave me a pretty long fight. I think it was maybe 15 minutes and uh, he came and landed it for me. And uh, you know what, that was my first trout and I caught it with a pink trout worm. Very exciting. This guy's not hooked really well. So Barb, maybe we're gonna get it in the Lucky Strike net. We won't use the cradle yet. Okay. See if I can turn him around. Um, he's just got that hook just in the lip. Yep. He is nice and thick. He is. So thick. see if you can slide him in here. And perfect, oh, Barbara. He's longer than I hey, thought. Hey, he barely fits in that net. I, I like know. that. Hey. He's beautiful. So Barbara's using the TS2. I'm actually using the shift outfit, which is perfect for bass fishing or pike fishing, loaded with Suffix A32 20 pound test. Okay, Barb, if you lift him up, I'm going to try to put my hand around him. Oh. You know He's what, big. maybe let's put him in the water. I'll get my glove first. Yeah. Hold on a sec. I can see actually all the weeds in the bottom here. Now you knew before I did that it was a pretty good sized pike, right? I did, yes. Because I just set the hook gently. Yes. And uh, then he was heavy. I thought it was weeds, but it was the actual fish that was that heavy. Okay, Barb, if you want to bring him up. Beautiful fish. Oh. He is gorgeous. So you can see the way this guy thrashed in the line. Look at, he opened up the spinner, Barb. Oh my. But the hook didn't let go. And that says a lot for the Lucky Strike wire. Because the wire, did, even though it was open, look at this is what we're talking about here. Just the fish thrashed so much that uh, wire, spring wire opened up, but uh, we didn't lose the fish. I don't know if I can close it with the fish in my hand. It's pretty good spring steel. Come on, I've almost got it. There, I closed it. So that's the way it's supposed to be. But see how nice he's hooked. Look, again, you can see he's just through the roof of the mouth. So you gotta be careful. See, if you give it slack line, the hook could fall out just like that. If you keep the pressure on, it's okay. And it's so easy to take the hook out. Okay, any idea on length? Barb, you're gonna take a guess? I was saying 32, but I think he might be even bigger. Uh, you know what? He's just over 30. So I've got him right at the front. I've got his tail squeezed. There's the 30 inches. So that's not a bad northern. So he's just over 30 inches, you know? 
And uh, I love to walleye fish. Barb and I were having fun. You got a nice 26 inch walleye yesterday. Yes. But it's nice to come here for a break and work the weeds. And I'm working the Yamaha kind of like an electric back and forth into the wind. And you get nice pike like this on bass gear. They fight good. They taste good, but this one's going back in the water. You know, these nets, we keep talking about these Lucky Strike basket nets are ideal because you can see it's actually quite easy to get the fish out of the actual basket. So we're gonna let them just um, revive. This guy I think has got lots of strength and I'm gonna wait till he gets righted up so that his uh, belly's down and back is up. Right now he's just getting his energy and then he'll bolt off. Oh, he's starting to get his energy. He's taking his time and there he goes slowly. Fisher girl! Hi Italo, what I'm holding here is a two-piece, five and a half foot medium action rod and it's actually quite convenient. Um, I was out fishing a couple weeks ago for pike and down at the bottom we've got the rear drag, very convenient for when you're bringing in a really big fish. And up here on the top it's uh, very easy and convenient to change the spool if you choose with the push button right on the top. The ribbon is just one of the series from Fisher Girl. The nice thing about this outfit is that it's soft enough to use with live bait and the rod is stiff enough that you can cast lures pretty far. And you know what, Nikki? For someone your size, which is average, average size, it's a perfect length as well to get all kinds of fish. Closed captioning is brought to you by Naden Boats, Canada's finest aluminum boats. If you're planning on doing any fishing for northern pike in northern Ontario, probably the number one lure is a red and white spoon, and that's one of the lures that I'm holding up here. Spoons seem to work extremely well if you're fishing around weeds that aren't growing to the surface, or if you're casting along shorelines, rocky shoals, points, and reefs in open water. So you'll notice here that this spoon is very long and thin. So you're gonna to have to retrieve it a little bit quicker because it's gonna have a faster drop rate. The spoon that I have in the middle is called a fire tiger color and it's chartreuse. It's got a little bit of green with black stripes and these two um, red beads that sometimes really attract the fish into hitting. And then the larger one that I have here is also more of a willow shaped color. So you'll have to retrieve it a little bit quicker. No matter which one of these that you use, you should be using a wire leader and it would help if you use a suffix 832 braided line to get better castability. And as soon as the fish hits, set the hook. Barbara, remember fishing this bay last year? I sure do. Oh, you know what? I can't see the lure on this pike. Is that right? This is gonna be interesting, honey. Uh-oh, he swallowed it. But it might be a keeper. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, I can't see it. Oh my. Look at, he's not a huge pike. Oh, okay, now I see it. You know what? Part of that rapella came out. I'm gonna try to get him in a little closer. Like the way they head shake, Barb? Yeah. <laughs> what a jumper. Oh jumped my. jumped over the net. He did. He wouldn't make a very good basketball player, eh? No. Okay, let's see if we can get him in there. Perfect. Now, at least I don't have the chance of getting my hand caught on the hooks because it's inside the fish's mouth. Here at Marmac, you are allowed to keep six pike. Um, most people might keep one or two for a shore lunge. So we've got one on here right now. Let me get another link on there. And this guy is around 24 inches. I'm gonna measure him in a minute. I'm just gonna put him on the chain first. We're allowed four, actually all of them can be under 24 inches, and you know this guy is just under 24. You can see he's just short of that where the blue ends. Then you're allowed one over 24, but he's got to be under 33, and one over 33 if you want. So I'm just going to slide him in the water so nobody gets hurt. Now that pike hit a Rapala BX 12 centimeter lure, and if you look here on the lure, you can actually see that they've stamped it Rapala BX swimmer and then 12 for 12 centimeter. So this is a unique lure because it's made out of balsa wood and then it's also coated in plastic. It sinks slowly and you can see from the color that it's really a minnow color. Very natural finish and uh, it's got a really big eye which those pike like to zoom in on. So this lure is just designed to be cast and retrieved and that fish must have seen it, came up from the back and just engulfed the whole thing. So if you like to pike fish, you might want to try one of these, even for salmon and other species of fish. They're just the right size, that 12 centimeters, and they look natural and they swim natural.
If you like to fish soft plastics for largemouth bass, pike, even walleye, even muskie, Trigger X has an excellent line of some swim baits. The top one here, the bright yellow and pearl color, is called the paddle tail minnow, and it's four and a half inches long. And the one just below it here is called the stump hopper. It's the one that's that natural color. Now, both of these work well, whether you use them as trailers, as I have on a large spinner or spinner bait, or if you fish them on just a very large worm hook, whether it's weighted and unweighted. But what the tip I want to give you is picking the actual hook. See this hook that I have here? It's not like a normal worm weight. You can see it has a little corkscrew device, which is ideal because you actually screw the soft plastic on there. So I'm going to show you. You literally take that. It kind of pivots around on its own. You take the head of your swim bait right in the middle and literally turn it. And right away, that corkscrew device catches onto it. And you go down, not all the way, you let a little bit of the corkscrew device hang out. And then the next step is to put the hook in the right spot through the plastic so that it lays straight. In this case, I want the hook to actually be exposed because these pike are very aggressive. So I'm going to go down into the belly of the bait, go up through the top, and then it's going to come out. So that's set perfectly. You can see that it's straight on there. We don't have any kind of a curvature. That hook is exposed, but it's so close to the actual back of this body bait that um, it's going to be pretty weedless, especially if it hits any kind of wood on the bottom or uh, even heavy weeds, it'll probably go over that. But as soon as a pike clamps down on that, it's so flexible that it's going to get the hook in its mouth. Now these types of hooks come in two configurations. This one here is unweighted. So you can see it's designed to be fished in shallow water, or you can add it if you're tipping it onto a large spinner blade, a spinner bait, and so on. The other one that I've got here is actually weighted. And I like what they've done because that weight is like a triangular shape. So you can actually turn it. If your swim bait isn't swimming just right, for some reason it's on one side, they give you instructions in the back. You can actually turn that weight one way or the other, or even slide it further up or further down the hook so that it's balanced just right. Because the way you want these swim baits to come through the water is naturally. You want the belly down and the back like that on top. So they're coming through like a real fish and all the action really comes from the back. This tail, because it has a paddle tail, slaps back and forth, and it seems to be irresistible to fish. Each year, thousands of anglers volunteer their time to actually help sustain or improve our fisheries. They get involved in community projects like restocking programs, raising fish in some cases, rehabilitation projects that have to do with streams or even to lakes, and in some cases, even community events that help to promote conservation and fishing in the area. If you're a dedicated fisherman, I would really encourage you to get involved with some conservation work with the local fish and game club. It's easy. All you have to do is contact them and you probably enjoy going to some of their events anyway and volunteer and get some good things done. Bob not only puts us onto the fish, but he also does our meal. Do you do anything else? Like prep Clean boats? Clean fish, everything, prep boats. Yeah. Prep so I just want you to look at these potatoes. He's almost going to get them to like potato chip consistency. You can see that they're thin for a reason. He's got the onions mixed in there. By the way, try not to spill any because we're not going to waste one of them. They're so good. So you don't mind doing shore lunches for the next five, days? Oh, I love doing shore lunches. Days? Yeah. So we got, part. we've got beans, we've got the potatoes, we've got fresh walleye and pike mm -hmm. that we caught in. I made uh, tartar sauce. Did you make the tartar sauce yes, for I the did. cook? That's nope, awesome. I did. Potatoes don't taste like this at home. I'm not a potato guy. It's, eh? it's a lot of, I think a lot of it has to do because you're cooking over an open fire, in fresh air, out in the bush. Just everything tastes so much better. I don't know. Even canned beans. I've had many, uh, many a guest come up to me and said they tried to cook it at home. And it, it no, it won't be. It's the not the same. I like the way you do the fish. I like my fish well done. You know, I don't yeah. like them pink or white in the middle. No, I don't know. either. I, I, there's, there's a certain way you got to do them. You don't want to get them, dry them right out. No. You know? No, these won't be dry because the, the oil was hot. I think that's half the trick. Yeah. 
Man, they cooked fast. Two minutes. Doesn't take, fish doesn't take long to cook. You know, if you want to enjoy a great trip, Marmac is the place to do it. You can come in by train or fly in. You can catch fish all day long. Pike, walleye, whitefish, jumbo perch, and they even have a brook trout lake that you can walk to. I mean, this is awesome. It is awesome. It's a nice northern barb. Oh, wow. I love when they take off like that, yeah. like a little bullet. Oh, they So I've let off my here. drag just a little bit, because if he makes those runs, I don't want him to uh, tear the hook out or do anything. You know, I don't think he's ready yet, honey. No. This guy looks like he's probably around the 29, 30 inch mark. And he's got that spinner bait just on the edge of the mouth. Let's see if he makes one more run. Okay. So I've just got to, I want him to be a little bit tired before we start handling him. Mm -hmm. So you're going to give us a head shake. Okay, let's try it. We've okay. got that basket net. Beautiful, nice net job. Thank See, you. now he goes crazy. Look. Yeah. <laughs> you got him though. He's Energy not going plus, anywhere, right? Eh? Okay. Oh, well Bring him fed. Over just a little bit. This guy's well fed. You know what? Um, he's got some nice shoulders on him, Barb. He has he's energy. He's pretty wide. Why Look at this. He's all rolled up oh, in that no. spinner bait. It's okay. Let's see how good this Lucky Strike basket net is. It's got that plastic coating. Yeah. On the mesh. My goodness. Look at this. Oh, there. that was easy. That was easy, right? Yeah. Okay, now, that was half of it. Look at this spinner bait. It's almost in a complete circle, Barb. Okay, we're going to get a measurement. Here we go. From the tip of the snout, he's uh, just under 27 inches. It's a nice little northern to get in the middle of the day after a torrential downpour, but then it cleared up. So I'm just going to get him in the water right here. And it won't be long before he takes off. Hopefully he won't splash me. Just gonna hold him up for a split second. Look at those nice bars, Barb. Aren't yeah. they gorgeous? Beautiful. So I'm gonna hold him up just a little bit, and there he goes. Canadian Sport Fishing is brought to you by Suffix, the world's most hardcore fishing line. Yamaha Outboards, reliability starts here. Sail the Outdoors Superstore. Fisher Girl, catch the passion. When it comes to pike fishing, the best thing you can do is fish water, especially in northern lakes, that's anywhere from about four to 10 feet deep. And most of the time, if you find some shorelines that are a little bit faster dropping, you're within 50, 50 feet from shore, just like we are here. Now today we've got really windy weather. So what I'm actually doing is using this Yamaha, running it and putting it from reverse to neutral to try to slow our drift down. And you can see how smooth it is. 